What's up guys, welcome back to another video, hope you're all doing well today. Today I'm going to take part in one of them very enjoyable <laughs> uh, Krakenberg challenges that I do. And the last one I've done this was seeing if I could get around the entire Krakenberg on the CRF150. And today we're going to see if I can do it on the altar. Now, the bike, as you can see, the bike is going to be incredibly slow. I've got it in eco mode to hopefully make the battery last as long as it can do. Uh, I've not changed the gearing or anything like that. The only other changes that I've made to the bike is extending the swing arm and the rod length ever so slightly, just to make it a bit more uh, tolerable up the hills. And I've got, I've just got no idea how this is going to go, really. Um, I, I used the altar in the aerial race the other week. And, oh my god, hang on. I might not even be able to get up some of these hills. This is painfully slow. Like, this is, I'm full throttle right now. <laughs> it, hmm. And I've already used point two of my fuel on the left. Um, but I suppose we're just, we're going to see how far we can go. Now, I, I quite enjoyed using it, as frustrating as it was the other day in the aerial championship. I'm not going to get this hill, am I? Oh my god, this is ridiculous. I mean, I'm not wheel spinning at least, which is a good thing, but... My god, I've, all used, I've, I've used 0.3 litres of fuel already. What on earth is this? I swear it doesn't use this much even on overclock. What the hell? But yeah, so that, that main event the other week was 20 minutes plus a lap. And I used about 6. Like the equivalent of 6 litres of fuel. And I obviously Max Hard uses fuel when it's an electric bike. But you know, I think it just... It, it's just to say how much battery essentially you've got until you run out. I don't I don't even know if I'm going to make it up this hill here. Come on, go, 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 go. No! Oh, stop! Don't run out. Don't, 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 no, no, no. Oh. Very right. Very precarious situation here. Back it up. Back it up. Oh, and we're rolling back down. God damn it. <laughs> oh, God. Well, we're, we're not going to make it very far, I don't believe. At least on the uh, the video on the 85, we had somewhat of a chance. And... <clears throat> Right, okay, attempt number two. I went back to the pits, put it into performance mode rather than eco mode, just to give it a little bit more oomph, and we're, oh, we're going to have the same result, aren't we? Oh my god, I've, I've literally I've failed this hill five times in a row now. This is actually ridiculous. Come on! Yes! Oh my god, we've already used half a litre of fuel just to get up, like, hill number three. This is ridiculous. I'm not going to try and be, like, super, super conservative on the straights like I did last time on the, on the 150, um, but, I mean, I can try and... I can try and be a little bit gentler on the throttle, I suppose, but I, I can't believe how much we've used already. As I say, that's a bang it off the limiter in the air. <laughs> oh, it's going to be crash. Oh, okay. It's fine. It's good. It's good. I've um, got a very long straight here, so I don't know what our top speed will be, actually. I swear, we get into like the 80s or so, I think, on the uh, on the actual enduro bikes, and we're maxing out at about 60 here. That is, I did make the gearing a little bit more on the acceleration side of things, just again, to try and help us get up the hills in whatever way possible. I, I did not expect it to be that bad. Um, so yeah, for everyone saying that the altars also can be really competitive, I don't agree. <laughs> it's so, it's just, it's nowhere near on the level of the other bikes. I'm sure if you went into a public lobby, you could go and do some damage. Other than that, I think you're really grasping at straws to say this bike is competitive in any way. Uh, and then I suppose as well, it, it, all, it all comes down to your skill level compared to the skill level of people you're riding against. With how quickly I seem to be burning through it, we've used... Well, we've used about a litre in three minutes now. So that only really sets us on for maybe like 40 minutes max if I'm being really uh, like conservative on the throttle application. And I think it would be quite interesting just to see how far I can make it. And so I, I, well, I mean, I've, there's different parts of this track take up a different amount of fuel. You know, when you're being really gentle on the throttle up the hills or through the rock garden and such, you barely use anything. But I don't know if the same thing does apply to the battery on this bike, if it does to fuel in on a normal bike. So I don't, I don't know exactly how the battery works on this. I mean, all I asked before, um, I asked a question actually. So I see Max Hud at the top left there says I've got X amount of fuel left. Now, when you're on a normal petrol bike, then when you're doing qualifying laps example for races uh, a lot of the top guys will tend to put the bike on one litre worth of fuel to kind of save as much weight as possible and it is worth a good like two two three temps maybe throughout the course of a, a supercross lap at least and I, I asked the question of even though the bike is electric the max hud thinks it's got fuel in it does that then mean that when the this battery essentially runs down this does the bike get lighter as well i know that sounds like a stupid question and it's like no electricity doesn't weigh anything but it is a video game in a day and i didn't know if, if the game knew that it was an electric bike if that makes sense and i didn't know if the bike actually does still get lighter regardless of having fuel in it or not 
Uh, but I, I got told that that is not the case. Um, and what you want to do with that information, I, I do not know. But as you see there, we just went through like a more of a foresty area. Uh, up, up some hills, being gentle on the throttle. And we only use kind of 0.2 litres or 0.3 now through that bit, as opposed to the almost a litre before that. So it's going to be interesting to see how far we get. We're 100% we got, we've got to get to checkpoint number one at least. Now, checkpoint number one, as I say, on a good lap, it takes me about 14 and a half-ish minutes to get there. On the 85, I think it took somewhere around maybe like 16 to 18. I really can't remember. No idea about this, because obviously I've, I've failed on a couple of hills already. I was quite surprised I got over that big hill that we went over just now, first time. I'm, I'm quite shocked by that. Usually that's one that gives me a little bit of grief. But um, I'm, yeah, I'm just interested to see how, well, A, how far we can get, but then B, how long it takes to get there as well. There we go. I feel like I always cut the video to this point when we get through our first mini rock garden slash rock bed, just to give you a little bit of a taster of, uh, of what's to come. Just weave your way through the rocks. Nice and easy. Little advice I'll give is just to look as far ahead as possible and try and work out where you want to end up. And it just makes your life a bit easier when you're kind of heading in a general direction where you want to be rather than looking at the rock direct or boulder, whatever you want to call it, directly in front of you. Uh, and then having to kind of like swerve at the last moment. Uh, this hill gives, sometimes gives me some grief, sometimes it's okay. What we're going to be like this time? That was actually quite pain free. I'm quite surprised by that. No wheel spin at all. Ah, now the next uphill. This is one that I'm quite concerned about. I'm going to go, I don't think I'm making it all the way to the top, but I'm going to try and go as fast as I can until it starts getting a little bit unstable. Then I'm just going to shut off, kind of let the bike slowly come to a stop and I'll push it the remainder of the way. Let's have a, have a look, see how things go. Lean back, gentle, 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 gentle. Oh, that was actually a really, really good run. I'm quite happy about that. Now, I don't know if anybody saw my controller over there there. But you'll notice the higher and higher I get to the top as the bike slows down more and more, I will let off the throttle more and more and more. And that really just stops the back end from coming a bit unstable, stops the front end from getting really light and swapping side to side. And it really just it gives you the best opportunity possible to get to the top of the hill without doing a, a 360 and falling all the way back down. Now we're going to hit this as fast as possible and we're going to have to suddenly uh, turn to the right and go up and around the log. Screw it, there's the tree, that's the marker. Oh, no. <laughs> Not quite how I wanted it to go. I don't think I've ever gone over the log like that before. That's an interesting line. I'll be I'll be sure to remember that one for next time. And we've got to very slowly, kind of slowly way through the trees, down the hill. And there we go. And we're about to kind of drop down this hill or cut, drop down a couple of layers. And then we'll pop a right, hit a very, very long straight. And then we've got kind of difficult hill number two. There we go. This one could be quite difficult. Just, just because of my speed going into it, it's quite limited. I'm interested to see what it's going to be like all the way up. Go on. Oh, what a run. What a run. We got a little bit sketchy to the top, but you know what? I'll take that. I'd much rather crash and get up and over than uh, kind of mess up halfway up and it go completely wrong. That, that really, really did surprise me there. <laughs> oh, easy. Easy trail breaking. Slide in. There we go. Uh, quite surprised, actually, the difference just between the eco mode and the performance mode. I'm guessing it goes eco, performance, sport, overclocked. I'm guessing in terms of kind of power, like low power to high power delivery. That that eco mode is ridiculous. I don't, <laughs> I don't know when anybody would ever want to use that. Oh, there we go, another challenging mini hill. I think it's just because of the you get such a small run up for this one that it gets quite difficult. Oh, nice and gentle. Look at that. No, don't go back down. Please, 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 please. Yes. Whew. Okay. Okay. Panic over. That's fine. And we're, so we've used two. Well, we're coming up to using three liters here in almost like 12 ish kind of minutes. So if we want to do the maths on that, we've kind of got another four times that distance, which would take us up to 48 minutes. So we could, uh, I suppose, and then we're going to get to the rock gardens and stuff, which is going to take even less fuel to get through because it's very, very gentle on the throttle slash um, blipping it. We're not wide open anywhere. Uh, so we could even gap to around about the hour mark. Now, I would expect a lap time around here on this bike with all the mistakes like this. Uh, please don't go all the way down, back down. Please, please, please. Oh my god, a tree's actually saved me for once. I'd expect this lap to kind of take around an hour 20, hour 30, depending on how it goes. So uh, it's going to be one limb, but I think we are either going to push it to the finish or come up way short. Like It's, it's very, very, it's very difficult to judge. 
but we're using way way more than we ever did on the CR in the last video so it's going to be it's going to be interesting for sure and I, I really like I do I enjoy doing these because it kind of shows you the limitations and what we've got in the game what we can kind of use to our disposal I've done a really hardcore version of Krakenberg before with a bunch of guys where it was night time and there was no assists on or anything like that uh, which was quite fun I've never I don't think we've done just like a normal daytime race against a whole bunch of people and it'd be nice to get a full gate on Krakenberg at some point to be able to do that uh, but then I suppose the point of these challenges is really see what bikes you can use because obviously everyone uses the enduro bikes it's what they're designed for but if other bikes are capable of getting around then why not why not include them in the mix yeah, this is always one of them hills where I just end up absolutely sending it because it's just much easier than trying to be precise that that could be the best I've ever hit this maybe there, maybe there is something to the uh, the amount of power that this bike has and the delivery of the power as well or maybe I've just got lucky with the setup somehow with making the swing arm really long um, and the certain gearing that I've got that it just makes it a little bit easier but it's not been too difficult uh, like traction wise and stability wise absolutely fine it's more the power the lack of power going into the hill that really causes any problems and that is not how you want to enter this hill jesus christ i did not do a good job there i'm going to spin it around quickly and try again that is the line that i wanted kind of threading the needle between these logs but i don't think i've ever had it kick out my front wheel like that before there we go that's what i was after and then very very slowly very gently up and round there we go checkpoint number eight out of about 30 so we still got some ways to go i will say that trying to break down these steep hills a lot more difficult on this bike it's got no it's got no real engine braking at all so you know you can't bang it into first gear and let the bike slow itself down it's just all on the we are going to be way over that 14 and a half minute mark for set to one i would like it's probably going to end up being about 17 and a half minutes by the time we get to it which is quite sad that i know where all the sectors are on this track but you know i've done it i've done it a handful of times done it a couple of times whilst hunting for my uh, my world record laps back in the beta 16 days i couldn't imagine trying to beat it now obviously the it's the track has got exponentially harder with the lack of traction especially on those uphills there we go 1720 wasn't far off with my estimation uh, that's it's not terrible oh please don't fall off the edge please 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 spawn there okay we'll push it up we'll push it so we've used oh god actually that's bad we've almost used four which would be a third of our uh third of our fuel done there about 20 minutes on so yeah no we are on par for about an hour so actually as as time goes on we're kind of we're getting more and more distance out of it and I, d I do think it is just because of the different parts of the track using up less um, the middle sector basically the whole middle sector of this massive like just massive track uh, is, is basically all rock gardens I mean that, that's one way to come to a stop isn't it uh, so we'll probably burn through very very little so I'm kind of thinking about it this is becoming more and more doable in my head maybe maybe I should actually start trying to be a bit more conservative and just try and save some battery yep this is what my life has resorted to now half throttling it at 40 miles an hour on one of the most wide open straights on the track this is uh, incredibly painful to go through this it always feels going to be difficult not much of a run up here at all slowly 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 and push from here that's fine i don't want to risk it i don't want to risk doing a backflip and rolling all the way back down oh we, uh, sorry we've got to put on the throttle a little bit for this little double up we're up oh make it oh, not quite clipped it a little bit there not quite as uh, smooth as i would like or oh, another one of them super tricky hills coming up here that I either hit absolutely perfectly first time or it takes me a couple of attempts or I just have to stop halfway up and go the rest. Got some good speed. Oh, I'm a little bit further to the left than I would like. Yep, yeah, no, I got a little bit on the off camber there, which made me get all kinds of squirrely. I'm going to go down and uh, I hit that again. Let's have attempt number two of that. All right, more to the right this time. There we go. It's a little bit of a better line. Gentle, 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 gentle. There we go. See, I just barely try and keep the front wheel off the ground the entire way up just to stop it from uh, swapping side to side. Oh, can I hit the fast line up this hill is the question. Don't, don't think I got it on the 150, but let's try it. Straight up here. Oh, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Yes. I don't, it's, I don't know why I'm so happy with that. It just cuts out one extra corner of, uh, of S-Bends going up this hill. Or I don't know what you'd call it. But um, no, I just, <laughs> if that's one of them deciders on if you're like on a good run or not. Usually when I was going for like world record times obviously not here we're we're way down on where i would like to be at this point uh even just just three minutes behind on the first sector which is a hell of a lot of time to gain on a track like this here is a pro for the auto rather than a con as well is every time i do crash i haven't got to worry about putting it back into first gear of time we just stay in neutral all the time on this bike it does we haven't got gears we've just got to go and that's it which is really really nice this hill is also one that gives me grief let's see how we uh how we tackle this one it's a horrible angle which throws me off all the time 
which it does. And I don't even think I'm going to go for a take two there. I'm just going to push it to the top. And then we've got some really, really fast straights, which I get to painfully half throttle just to try and save as much battery as possible. And I am now in kind of like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I suppose e eco mode, really. I mean, we're not eco on the bike, we're on performance, but I'm going into eco mode myself on the throttle by riding like this everywhere to save as much battery as possible. I, I feel like I'm doing something. I don't know if it works the same as the uh, as the fuel bikes, but I can only hope. Now, I've never ridden an electric dirt bike in real life. I know that probably a couple of you in the comments have, but d can you generally hear the wheels on the ground more than you can hear the engine, or well, quote unquote engine, you know what I mean? If so, because like, that's what I'm hearing right now. I'm hearing the sound of the tyres on the like uh, the sand traction more than I'm hearing the engine noise. And that to me would feel like really, really off-putting. And l let me know if that is the case, uh, if you've ever ridden one in person. Does it feel weird? Is it something that you like really quickly get used to? I'm really, really curious to find out. I know we haven't got alters anymore because the company kind of doesn't really exist, but we've got the Varg that's being, being worked on. That will, I, I don't know when the release date's meant to be for that, but I, I've read... That it's meant to be like really really competitive compared to just the normal like 450 bikes for example um I, I, i'm very i'm just really intrigued to see how they go down if if they're going to be essentially like op irl or, or what and it, maybe if they'll be limited if they can actually race against the normal bikes it, very very curious to see how that goes how expensive they're going to be as well um but i imagine that it was like whilst whilst obviously I, I love the sound of my two strokes and all that uh, i've mentioned here in the uk for example we get all sorts of tracks shut down just for noise reasons and, and things like that so to have the ability to ride bikes essentially silently whilst in some places it's probably going to be quite frowned upon i imagine in others it can be really really welcomed and i just think it's going to be like a whole new generation of the sport and whilst we're all going to be sad to see the engines go over time inevitably it's it's going to happen of course you're always going to get those bikes that will stand the test of time you know like collect even people having bikes as collector's items like cr500s for example they'll i feel like they'll be around forever preserved by those diehard fans in some way or another but i think over time i don't know how many years it's going to take i feel like it we will go the way of electricity at some point we have now used half of our quote unquote fuel in uh, air quotation box half of our battery and we are half an hour into the uh, into the ride so my best ever time around here is a 56 something and that took me well i don't know how much fuel it took me um but i say that's my best ever and i was already three minutes off going into sector one so that already has taken us near to a, an hour so it's gonna be very close i'm interested to see how much fuel we use through these rock gardens this is the very the first what i call proper rock garden um uh, yeah I'm, I, it depends how the rest of this sector two is gonna go if it goes well and we use barely any fuel i i'd actually be quite confident at that point that we can make it to the end but it all yeah it all does come down to how much fuel we use over the next kind of 20 minutes or so on if we'll make it to the end of the track are you sure you put enough gas in uh no actually resolute <laughs> i didn't put any gas in that's that's the whole reason we're doing this yeah I, i've gone into full conservation mode at this point this is i think one of the longest straights on the entire track Usually I come flying past that portaloo at like Mac 10 speed and have to thread the needle through these uh, these two tyre stacks up ahead. But we shouldn't have any of that issue today, just uh, out for our nice casual Sunday ride. No problem, not even tagging handlebars at all. Um, <laughs> it's, oh, it's painful. At least I can sit here and I can sit, I generally sit here on my phone whilst doing this. I suppose that's one positive. Now, are we going to get lucky with the snow hill of doom today? I think the answer will be no be purely on the basis of how little engine braking there is. I feel like I'm just going to slide all the way to the bottom and then just send a punch to Stonewall, but we shall see. Let's, uh, let's have a look how this goes. And nice and gentle. And front wheel's already gone. What? That? that this? Oh, oh, hang on. We're not off yet. What's going on here? Oh my god. That could have, that could be the worst attempt I've ever had of going down that hill. What on earth is that? The front end just went instantly at the top. I don't know if you can see those little pixels all the way off in the distance, but there are uh, more rock gardens to come our way. They are the the bigger two before you then get into Carl Steiner, which is the the main the main boy. He is the uh, the hard one. And the more that I try and just be like really really gentle when on the throttle around here, the more I'm the more I'm kind of feeling confident that we we generally could get to the end of this. 
that could be the first time I've ever failed to kind of break slow my way down that hill. And I do believe that it's purely on the basis of there's no engine brake in to assist me there. There we go, coming to the end of this one. Then we've got these horrible massive boulders to try and huah, jump up and over. Oh, that was really clean. I'm happy with myself there. And easy rock gardens done and dusted. Now we get these horrible things over there. And I'm quite happy with the amount of battery I'm using. Now at the top left, whilst the the quote-unquote fuel actually seems low the amount of laps that it predicts i've got left is quite um what's the word like it builds my confidence it still says i've got half a lap worth of fuel remaining so that will take us up to about an hour and 10 hour and 20 minutes in total time which i feel like is possible i feel like that could be what sort of time we're on for so watch this space we could get there uh oh uh oh oh god there we go, there's going to be a few respawns inside this bloody rock. What was that line that I took? That, <laughs> that was definitely not what you was meant to do. God, I'm free. The issue that I'm actually having on the... Oh, please don't do it again. Oh, you've got to be shitting me. I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Ah! Oh, I was going to say, the issue that I've been having is because there's no clutch as such on the altar, my game's just crashed. I got... Oh. I'm not doing that again. I was 45 minutes in. Oh, I can't believe it. That's unreal. Um, maybe another day. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed it up to that point. That's actually... I feel like I've been blue-balled there. That's awful. I hate that. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, thank you guys for watching. I apologise that we couldn't uh, couldn't get all the way. Mate, we will retry it at some point. That will give me another video to do at least. Uh, but I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, please do drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new. I hope you have a lovely rest of the day, whatever it is you guys are up to. And I'm gonna go and cry. Peace. I'm working hard. I'm sacrificing my life. I'm sacrificing my mind. I'm sacrificing my sanity. But most importantly, I'm sacrificing my time. Boy, I feel fine. I feel like I am a king. Honestly, I can't complain. Even with faith that's the size of a grain of some salt, I will still move a mountain and do what I want. I got salt to feed for my own.